On June the 26th, 2020, Ty Benji, real name Tyron Mitchell Almodovar, is sitting in the back of a taxi. At around 11 p.m., a white BMW pulls up. Reports suggested that after yelling something, an occupant of that BMW opened fire, hitting Ty Benji in the head. He would be left for dead in the back of that cab on a busy street. Now, Ty would initially survive that attack, spending several days in the hospital. But sadly, only two days after the shooting of Ty, yet another attack would take the life of another young man, leaving the local community shaken. Just before midnight on June the 28th, 2020, a 17-year-old by the name of Brandon Hendricks, known to his friends as Diddy or B Diddy, was apparently at a dice game outside of a building in Morris Heights, on Davidson Avenue near 176th Street. After an argument, he was unfortunately caught in the crossfire with a stray bullet hitting his neck, causing him to lose his life later in hospital. Who just graduated high school was shot and killed overnight in the Bronx. There's overwhelming grief following the death of 17-year-old Brandon Hendricks. I just can't believe it. I really can't. Police say he was shot in the neck outside an apartment building on Davidson Avenue near West 176th Street just before midnight on Sunday. After some sort of argument, he died at the hospital. Here outside his home, Neighbors say he was a good kid who had big dreams of playing basketball. Diddy was apparently a talented basketball player with a promising future. Killed just days after graduating, apparently he wasn't in a gang, but he did know some people that were involved in that lifestyle on the OGs and the OY side. As a result, the YGs would mock Diddy's passing on social media, saying things like basketball players need to stay at home, but sadly the tragedies in the streets of the Bronx were far from over. Two days after Diddy's shooting, Ty Benji, who had spent days fighting for his life in hospital, would lose that battle and succumb to his injuries. The Bronx is truly a war zone at this point, and only a few days after this, YG's member Rajiz would be wounded in a shooting just age 15. Now, police say the call came in at 3.30 for a 15-year-old boy shot one time in the back. Detectives working a crime scene at Oakland Place and Prospect Avenue. A police source tells me after the 15-year-old was shot, he made his way around the block towards his home. Police say the two suspects, possibly teenagers themselves, fled northbound on Prospect Avenue on a black and silver scooter. So while the streets of the Bronx are filled with gun smoke, the Bronx drill music scene would begin to show more and more signs of life. On August the 12th, 2020, D Thang of the YGs would become the latest Bronx rapper to rise to mainstream fame off the back of his new song, Caution. This high energy anthem is a Bronx drill favorite, partly because of its amazing beat and D Thang's impeccable flow, and partly because of the dark negativity and disrespect contained within its lyrics. D Thang's song, Caution, is crammed with disses and disrespect. He disses Shah EK, addressing him by his nickname, Jiggy Man. He references their earlier song, Shoot or Get Shot, saying that they're the ones who end up getting shot, an apparent reference to Shah EK being shot by a YG's affiliate, something that Shah EK alluded to in a Talk of the Town interview, which D Thang reacted to personally on his Instagram. It was a rumor saying that you got shot. Is that true? If you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, we know. Where do my mother we know? Also in caution, D Thang disses EDOT, but D Thang's disrespect on this song would go much deeper than simply insulting his living ops, and he would go on to reference several people who lost their lives, saying that his ops can go out like Noah, saying that he smokes Benji. But D Thang wasn't the only one in the Bronx drill scene upping the disrespect, because the following month, on the 6th of September 2020, K Flock and B Love would drop their latest drill banger, the song Op Spotter. In the track, both K Flock and B Love say that they'll shoot people for bunny hopping, an apparent reference to a dance that D Thang and other YGs are known to do. B Love says that he's smoking on Wu Lottie and that he screams OGs while rolling through the YGs building. And sadly, as these two sides would provoke each other in music, the deadly consequences of the gang banging lifestyle would also continue to play out in the streets. On September the 10th, 2020, 17 year old Kertha Wurtz, AKA K Dub or Dubski, was walking on the street in Ho Avenue in Crotona. And here he was confronted by two masked gunmen. He too would attempt to run away, but tripped up, with his assailants getting up close and shooting him multiple times, with K-Dub sadly later passing away in hospital. Loved ones lit candles and shared stories of 17-year-old Kether Wirtz. He was a cool him. dude, always laughing. He never bothered nobody unless he had to. Right, that's a fact. He was just a chill guy. Once again, the whole shooting was caught on camera and broadcast on the news, but again, is way too shocking to show you on YouTube. The cops would later make an arrest in this case, with later unconfirmed speculation suggesting that the killer may have been from Sev's side. But from here, only days later, would there be another senseless killing seemingly carried out by YG's affiliates. On September the 12th, 2020, 23 year old Christopher Pagan, AKA Yellow, was in a parked car at Jackson Houses on Park Avenue near East 158th Street in Melrose. 
Here, a gunman approached his vehicle and opened fire. One man was shot and survived, but sadly, Yellow was hit once in the shoulder and once in the head, leading him to tragically pass away at the scene. The YGs would mock Yellow after his death and begin to reference his name in their songs. Three people were arrested for this crime, two for being the shooters and one for providing the gun to them. Interestingly, the person who allegedly provided the gun in this hit was the younger brother of one of the older YGs who pled guilty for his role in Noah's death. And the younger YG's member, who was implicated in the killing of Yellow by allegedly providing the weapon, actually ended up being caught and confronted on camera outside of a courthouse by B Love himself. B Love, you talking about coming across the street? I came in court with it. Why can you throw that up one more time? You talking about? You talking about? Come across the street. Come across the street. Did you talking about? Suck my. He's up. Now, this video was taken by the YGs as a massive provocation against the group, and as a result, it would have only made B-Love and his close friends even more wanted targets for the YGs who were continuing to put in work on the streets. However, regardless of the dangers, with B-Love and K-Flock doing numbers in music, soon Dougie B would also musically put his name on the map too. And it wouldn't take long for this Sevside trio to wind up dominating the budding Bronx drill music scene.